There we go. Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to the 45th episode of the Hona live stream here on the Hona YouTube channel. Um, very much looking forward to today. Our guest is Mickey Raphael from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I would say he's a real harmonica superstar, best known for his work with uh, Willie Nelson. He can already look back at almost 50 years of touring experience and... I'm sure if you ever heard great harmonica playing on the radio, it could have been Mickey. So um, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Really looking forward to this. So you're in Nashville right now. That's true, right? Yeah, I am in Nashville. And uh, if you can hear that in the background, there's a guy mowing my, lo my yard out front. So I, I hear this big motor going right now. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, um, so if you have any questions for Mickey, you can just ask them in the chat. Um, I'll be reading along, and um, yeah, I'm very excited to talk to you. I mean, I really just like went through your whole harmonica history and uh, checked out the records you played on. Um, also, like the special stuff that you did with... I don't know, like Snoop Dogg. I'm a I'm a hip hop fan. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, me too. So uh, there's so much stuff, but um, you actually started out as a guitar player, from what I read. Well, I I I, I was a failed guitar player. I I just uh, I wanted to be a guitar player, but I was a terrible guitar player. So I thought, but I love music, and I wanted to be a musician. So a friend of my dad's gave me a, a harmonica when I was a kid. And uh, just something about it. I, I just felt comfortable with the instrument and I loved how it sounded. And um, I heard a guy named Donnie Brooks play in a little club in Dallas where I grew up. Yeah. And he went on to play with Waylon, you know, later in the uh, 70s. And uh, so he really inspired me to play. He was the first harmonica player I really paid any attention to and, you know, that I actually got to see in person. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's like very special. I mean, I just remember, for me, of course, it was a little different with all the YouTube stuff that was available. Um, but yeah, then at some point, like seeing these harmonica players in person that I only saw online, mm -hmm. I was like starstruck. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, yeah there's so, some great players out there. Definitely, yeah. And so, so Donnie Brooks was basically like your first harmonica teacher. Did you actually get lessons from him? Not really lessons, but he's, uh, when I met him at this club, he sat me down outside. You know, the, we, we sat on the steps and he, sh he wrote this, uh, this uh, pattern out, you know, the uh, just a uh, diatonic scale. And he said, learn that frontwards and backwards. And that's basically, the, I, mean, I mean, that's the basics for everything I play. If I'm going to teach, and I'm not a teacher, uh, nor do I want to be, but I, if, if I see a beginner, if a beginner asks me about something, I'll just write that out. That, uh, and yeah. you can just take those that pattern and, you know, break it up to, you know, and just make so many licks just from that uh, one pattern of playing. Oh yeah, and that's like something the harmonica just does very well, um, and uh, that tone is like already very inspirational. If you're starting out as a harmonica player, like I think uh, that's the beauty of the instrument that it already like sounds like music very early on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just don't. It's hard to tell somebody not to not to use all their air up, or you know, to be economical with their air and their breathing, and just you know, just don't don't play. So many people play so hard when they're first starting out or they'll run out of breath and i just tell people just to breathe through it you know just uh think about the notes you're going to play or don't think about the notes but just if if you're inhaling um the next few notes and you've got to get rid of that air the next few notes will be an exhale you know and just uh encompass your uh your breathing into your uh playing patterns oh yeah yeah that's true so, so did you ever like pick up the guitar again or yeah, I've got a couple of guitars around here, and and I took lessons, but it, you know, I didn't work on it like I worked on the harmonica, and it's just, uh, you know, I I think anything with strings on it, 
is uh, nothing that I'm going to get really good at. But I do have yeah. some of the owner accordions that I really love. You know, there oh, again, is reeds in there going through the reeds. Um, I mean, that's one of my, that's my favorite instrument is the accordion. So I just kind of mess around with those. Yeah, that's fantastic sound too. Uh, I just got a guitar like a few months ago. Um, but yeah, I'm practicing a little, but I, I mean... I'm meeting up with a guitarist tomorrow so he can play some serious stuff in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't do that. Um, so there, there are first questions coming in already. I mean, maybe we can clear this up like early on already. Darius is asking, what brand of harmonicas do you play? <laughs> well, Marine, uh, well, I, I play Honors, but I, and I, I love the Marine Band. I mean, I like all their products. But I like, you know, I started out playing the Marine Band. I like the wood combs. And I like the, uh, you know, like the, so the Marine Band, the crossovers. Uh, but I also like the Rocket, too. I love uh, recording with the Rocket because it's oh, yeah. got a really nice, mellow tone. And on stage, I like the, the wooden combs. You know, for some reason, they just, uh, I can, uh, they, they just really cut through, you know, in a live performance. Mm, okay. Uh, or do you also like the... Like the feel, I don't know if you're like a tonk blocker too, but I'm not. I'm, well, not for single notes, really. In fact, I was just talking to somebody yesterday about that. I don't really have that technique down, but um, you know, I'll, I'll tonk block if I'm going to play octaves or something like that. You know. Okay. Yeah. But but for playing single notes, I'm I'm a more of a purser than a uh, than a uh, tongue blocker. Oh yeah, definitely. Same here. But uh, yeah, I was just thinking about it because like of the feel of the the tongue sitting on the comb. Um, yeah, but it's something I need to work on. You know, I just need to practice, and I I mess around with it a little bit. But just when I get back on stage, I go back to you know what's the most comfortable. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Um, oh yeah, Woozle Effect already writes that the little pattern, like the major pentatonic you played, has such an instant country feel as opposed to the blue scale. Yeah. Clearly. <laughs> so, um, you already told me that you have been recording a lot during the last few months. Obviously, there was no tu touring. Um, but that's the beautiful thing, that you can just record your harmonica at home, right? Yeah. and with So you've been collaborating with people needed. all over the world. Yeah, and without spending a lot of money, you know, you need a laptop and uh, the interface, you know, you, we talked about you and I both have the Apollo uh, twin because I'm only recording one instrument or one or two mics at a time. Yeah. Uh, and um, so, and a couple of good microphones and uh, and all the Honer harmonicas you, you need. So uh, that's really all I'm, uh, you know, set up to do. And any kind of, you know, I'll, I'll, if I'm doing a session for somebody, I'll do four or five uh, takes and, uh, and and just send them to the producer or to the client or to the act and let them comp them. I really don't, you know, I, I just send them four or five of my favorite takes and let them pick and choose what to uh, what to use. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I know that it's like, what do you feel like? What was like the difference for you, like recording yourself and then like being recorded in a studio? Like I'm here, like, I mean, there are so many musicians who like get worse if their playing gets worse if they record themselves. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Like, yeah, what's different for you if you record yourself? I record myself? Yeah, you mean as, as compared to being in a studio and yeah. doing... You know, my first take is always the best. Okay. And, and, and I keep playing, you know, when I, the more I play, the further I get away from what I'm trying to do. But I mean, I, I'm not an engineer, nor do I want to be one, but I've, I've had engineers set up my home studio. So where I just really just have to turn it on and set a few things and uh, everything is uh, already, you know, everything's set. Now I've used Pro Tools uh, and, and it's, it's pretty user friendly. You know, that's yeah. why I'm not comping, though. I really don't have the skills nor the interest, you know, to be editing and uh, mixing and, st and stuff. I just want to be able to record the harmonica, you know, as well as it can be recorded and then just uh, send it, you know, send it off. And let them work, let a real engineer worry about uh, the technical stuff. 
Oh yeah. So um, you always showed me at the that you have like a vocal microphone and also a ribbon microphone. Like when do you use one of the two? Like what's like a reason well, to use, use one or the other? Yeah, I'll use the, the the Royer, which is a ribbon. I use. Um, I know I use. You know, it, it, it's. Uh, I don't know. I, it's, it, the if I'm playing in a higher key, you know, if I'm using an F harp, which yeah. is kind of kind of bright and and brittle sounding, I'll use the ribbon because it's a little warm, warm tone. Mm, okay. But if I'm using a, a playing the bass harp, a lot of times I'll use the Neumann because it's a little you know it's a little brighter. You know, for for some of the lower keys. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I just got the Neumann, but I'm um, I'm just you know and I'm using it more now because it's new to me. Yeah. You know. So, but 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 I found out that the uh, you know with, with the higher key harps, the uh, ribbon um, knocks down some of that high end, you know, and really rounds out the sound. Yeah, that's a that's a good reason. So, did did you get into playing low tuned harmonicas? Um, I've I haven't used them that much. If if the song calls for it, I mean, there's a few times where like I'll use the low F. You okay. know, or a low D or something, but then uh, you know, just kind of like for a pad. Um, I did a session the other day for uh, Aaron Lewis, who's a singer songwriter here in town, and he was a singer of that band Stained, which was a you know a heavy metal band. Um, but now he's doing his country act, and I, they wanted bass harmonica, so you know I, I used the uh, actually I had I, they, they had a Royer in the studio, so. Uh, We use that, but uh, yeah, I love playing bass harmonic. I'm not as prolific on it as uh, some of the other players out there. But you know, for easy keys, you know, uh, you know, C and G, and C sharp. Oh yeah. You know, where, there's, where there's not a lot of movement, you know, from the top to the bottom. Mm. But it has such a warm, such a rich tone. I would love to try a bass harmonica. I never did. <laughs> yeah, I have some that are. That are really I, I got them years ago, and uh, yeah, I have my mine are probably twenty twenty five years old. So. Oh yeah. So um. Oh sorry, I just got a phone call. I got to turn off my phone. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, like how about like amplified harmonica? Do you ever get to record through an amp? Sometimes um, I've got a couple of old fender amps here and then on the uh we used an amp on the chris stapleton record that i played on and the amp i used was a tiny little um uh god i think it had a i don't know i don't, I don't think it was even an eight inch speaker it's called a lunchbox and it might have had a, a five inch speaker or something but um You know, and, and used a, uh, I can't remember what mic I use now, but that's a, in, in the more recent terms, uh, more recent years, that's, that's the amp I've used. So I don't really, I haven't used an amp, you know, on anything we did with Willie. Yeah. But I've got a bunch of old vintage fenders if I, if I need something like that. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So obviously there are a lot of questions about, uh, your work with Willie Nelson. So um, Tiber Assemble is asking, what is the biggest anecdote you can tell of touring or recording with Willie Nelson so far? I mean, that's um, like the standard question, but maybe you have something to tell us. <laughs> yeah, we went to, well, one time we were in California. Where, where is he from? What, what part of the, is he uh, US or is he European? Oh, I'm not sure. I can't like click on his account or name well, well we have well i guess these guys are all over the world though we we, we were in a hotel and in in about 10 hell's angels you know the motorcycle gang came to, to 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 meet us wanted to meet willie so we're sitting there talking to him and willie says well i got to go to the show and they said well we'll take it so willie and i got on the back of their uh, of their bikes there's about 10 bikes total and we rode to the uh to, to the uh place we were playing and pulled up on the backstage, you know, door and the uh, policeman or the guard at the backstage entrance uh, said, you can't come in here. And the front bike pulled up and said, this is Willie Nelson. 
And the cop goes, uh, yeah. no, it's uh, yeah, sure it is. And Willie had to pull out his uh, his American Express card to prove who he was. So I thought that was kind of a funny little story, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's like probably not the only experience where you're basically like at a gig or somewhere where you have to be and they don't let you in. Oh, of course, yeah, that, that always happens, happens, happens right? <laughs> more, you know, multiple times where we might, where, where I might come in by myself yeah. and didn't have a pass or a credential, and and I've tried. I, I've out. I've been on uh, going to the field where we played. Uh, big rodeos, so it's in a big arena, and I remember coming out of the dressing room and running to the stage, and a cop or the guard stopped me, and I didn't have my pass on me, and I thought, well, let me see if I can outrun this guy, and I tried to run to the stage, but he got me, and uh, <laughs> like, luckily somebody vouched for me, you know, somebody. <laughs> oh yeah, there there are some videos of like like famous guest artists coming on stage like for a feature and then like security is like knocking them off. <laughs> yeah. Which is good <laughs> because, because you know it's, a lot of job, times yeah. the people you don't you know that that mean you harm that don't you know that shouldn't be there. So yeah, sometimes we get caught in that crossfire too. <laughs> so. You're doing a lot of work for for others, but uh, for your own albums, um, that's what Uzel is asking. Do you compose tunes based around the harmonica, or do you build off chords you'd play on the guitar or piano? Well, usually I'd, I'd work with a with a, the guy I was writing with instrumentally was a keyboard player, so he would we would just he would just play some changes, or I both. I mean, we're using the harmonica and the keyboard. We would just write. We would just turn on the machine sometimes, and just uh, play. You know what? You know, watching each other, and just uh, play off each other's changes that we we're coming up with, kind of making it up on the spot. Okay. But I play a little. You know, I don't play piano, but I know my. Uh, you know, I know the keyboard a little bit. So if I if I want to try to come up with a melody, I might try it on the piano first. So I'm a little more. Uh, adept on the piano than I am guitar. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah. It's maybe also more, more visual. <laughs> I mean, it makes more sense for me too. Like <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. talking about like the the visual aspect. Like, um, how about uh, yeah? If you are playing harmonica, like, what are you thinking about basically? What do you, what do you have in your mind when improvising or dinner? Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it, you know, I don't know. It might just depend on my mood at the time or, or where we are or if we've kind of come up with an idea or, you know, setting a mood, I think, is uh, oh yeah, is, uh, is what guides that, you know. So it's not like a, an actual, like, visual representation of the instrument that you have in mind? No, it's just kind of like, let's see where this song will go. And, um, yeah, um, yeah, because, uh, no, I, I think it's just all spontaneous, all, uh, just stream of consciousness stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Like sometimes for me, it's like, if I'm really thinking about stuff, it's like, I have a harmonica layout in my mind and. I have like a mental map of the piano sometimes, which is sometimes faster to think about. But yeah, um, obviously you want to get to that stage where it's just like, I don't know. Some people say they are thinking about colors or. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if somebody's telling me like, if I'm in the studio, you can, you know, and the producer's trying to explain, they're not a harmonica player, but he's trying to explain uh, to me what to, what he wants. I can, I can take direction in colors. You know, or or uh, oh yeah. But, but usually, I'll listen to the uh, I'll listen to the lyric. I'll listen to the words and try to paint a picture. You know, that complements the uh, the lyric. Oh yeah, that's so important. Yeah. Also, if you play like a piece that's like a melody that usually has like lyrics, like even as an instrumentalist to just know about the lyrics, it's like yeah helps you to interpret it. Right, and a lot of times if I'm in a session. It, Uh, along with getting a, a chart, you, you know, a chord chart, I'll ask for the lyrics to the song so I can kind of, oh yeah, know, read along and see what you know what the what the lyric is saying. 
So do you ever get like actual sheet music in a studio session? Oh yeah, it's it's all here in Nashville. It's all number charts. Oh yeah, of course. You know, like like one four five, you know, would be in the key of C, it'd be a C, F, and a G. Yeah. You know, so yes, it, um, I don't rely on them too much, but it's nice to know. You know, if you're playing a verse and then it goes back, uh, you, you know, to the chorus and my or the verse repeats, and they're not writing it out; they're just using repeat signs and stuff. So it's nice to know when they throw in a six minor or something, you know, I can see it there, but I'm not, I'm just kind of looking at it and listen, you know, looking at it halfway and listening. Yeah. But I rely on my ear to, and anti to anticipate what's gonna, what's gonna go on. If there's something, if there's a change that just didn't feel that I couldn't anticipate, it's good to have it written down in front of you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my ear is faster than, I don't know, my reading yeah. skills <laughs> yeah i'm not a real i'm not a great reader but uh you know and once i hear it once i hear the song and follow along with the chart then i know what's going on oh yeah um Wuzel would like to know more about your mental map of the harmonica um do you see the notes that you're playing in some sort of way um probably just that pentatonic uh pattern but um i'll I'll sing the notes to myself i guess or oh, i'll yeah. sing my parts you know but i'm really not i think uh as far as a picture um yeah I, it's kind of that pattern that donny brooks taught me when, when when you know i was 15. oh yeah you know just kind of as a route i mean just as, as a as a as a guide to where i am you know i might you know, uh, you know, slide up to note, you know, and then what, after I hit that note, coming down, I'm not sure where I'm going. I'm just gonna, you know, I know what notes not to play, but I may just think about, you know, you know, uh, the, the note to start a lick and then the rest is all spontaneous. Mm, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Like even, even though that there's like so many, like, Yeah, I play in different keys and stuff. Yeah, it's still like the second position stuff and like major mm -hmm. pentatonic and that's like uh, still the best uh, starting point for me yeah. to think about stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So and I I'll try to sing and I try and try to stick close to the melody too. You know. Yeah. Yeah, which is sometimes hard. Like I just uh, just recorded. Yeah, it's very some... hard, even if it's a simple <laughs> melody. Yeah, <laughs> I just started to record some stuff for like more like it's like pop music, and then of course you don't want to have like a, a virtuoso solo on there, but rather like a catchy melody or something. Right. So that's that almost as hard as like playing like a jazz solo, or mm -hmm. it could be harder too. <laughs> Yeah, but if you're writing it yourself, then you can, uh, then you can make it be anything you want. Yeah, that's true. So what I thought is like, um, besides like being able to play an instrument well, um, there there's like another skill set required for like a studio musician. Um, so uh, what would you say are those like really like aside uh, from music? playing music yeah learning to listen listen to the other play listen to the singer stay out of his way yeah stay out of the way of the lyric and um listen to what everybody else is playing if you've got other solo instruments you be it a piano or guitar um you know um give them enough room to play and then what maybe when you start your solo what i always like to do is i like to end my solo a little early to give, um, you know, to give the next soloist some uh, some room to breathe or, or you, you, you know, so he can either uh, have some pickup notes to get into his part, you know, whereas you, I'm just not playing to the end. If I'm taking a solo or splitting it with somebody, I'm not taking it all the way to the end. I'm kind of leaving a little space for him to come in or just have some air to breathe. And then when you're playing your fills, you, uh, you just size up the other play you know you know the other players that's the thing i usually play with other guys i yeah. know 
and the steel player, I know he likes to play on the choruses a lot. So I might, if nobody's, if the producer's not telling me what he wants, I might fill the second chorus, you know, and then stay and then get, I mean, second verse and then get out of the chorus, you know, for somebody else to fill. Or if somebody else starts playing feels at first, you stay out of their way. So it's, it's like talking. You don't really want to talk, you know, having a conversation. You don't want to talk when somebody else is talking. Yeah. Yeah. You just want to, want to add to what the other person said right. um and yeah refer to that that's something you gotta practice too like with the instrument <laughs> right, um, right right how about like uh i don't know what, social skills as a studio musician yeah well that, i mean that, that's i mean it's polite. definitely like a different situation <laughs> where then like being on tour playing on stage Yeah, I guess I'm more of a bully on stage. Not really. Well, I mean, everything is kind of where we play on stage with Willie is all mapped out. And with Chris Stapleton, it's all mapped out. There's no improvising. I'm a, a lot freer with Willie. I can really play anywhere I want. Mm -hmm. But uh, solos are kind of called, you know, or Willie, will, you know, he'll give you eye. It's all eye contact. You really have to watch what you're doing. Whereas with the Stapleton uh, show, it, it, everything is pretty well rehearsed or it's played like the record. You know, you're just copying the record. Where Willie's a lot looser, because um, we may play it one way and then he'll forget that arrangement, or just you know, he keeps it really fresh too, because it, because uh, um, you know, we, we we the set doesn't change that much, and we play so often, we just uh, change up the arrangement just to keep it, you know, to keep it fresh. Mm, yeah. But you've got to be aware of your other players, and and uh, you know, everybody's got to. Uh, Like I say, get along and not and not talk while the other's talking. Yeah. Mm, yeah. And I was also just thinking about like, I don't know, maybe there are people out there that just want to, that, that, that are good at an instrument, but they don't feel like going on stage. Like, would you say that there's still like a, like a studio scene? And what does it take to be like a studio musician? Like... Is that still something yeah, you can I, make a living from? Like if you do solely like studio work? I don't know. Not right now. I think it, I mean, it changed so little. Yeah, it's changed. I mean, there's so little work now. And uh, I, I mean, I don't do that much. You know, harmonica is not really used uh, on records that much. I mean, if I was a bass player, I might be getting a lot more work. Yeah. You know, you've got to have a bass or a, a piano or a guitar on every session. But you don't have to have harmonica on every session. It's kind of a, you know, icing on the cake. So uh, I'd say definitely uh, you're not going to rely just on doing studio work. I don't think there's enough work out there. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Well, what do you think like about the about the role of the harmonica in like in like pop music? Well, pop music it's even being used a little more. Um, but you know, it, it could always, it, it, it hasn't, uh, it, it's not being utilized enough. Well, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely. So what do you think about the, like the future of the instrument then? Well, I think we just have to get out there and, uh, and, um, you know, be seen with it and have, luckily you run into somebody that uh, wants to use it on a project that, that hasn't used harmonica before. That's what oh, I was yeah. in the studio with a guy the other day. Um, and um, we were working with uh, Jason Isbell and uh, his wife, Amanda, uh, Amanda Shires. And the producer, you know, said, Oh, I, you know, I, I've got some, uh, I'm working on some hip hop stuff that I think the harmonica be, would be great on. So, We'll see if that comes around, you know. That's the thing, yeah. I also think, like, I mean, people just have to hear the instrument. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah, the Mohamonka players are there. They are, and uh, they go out there and show what they are doing. Like, there will be Mohamonka on records then. Yeah, but I think also when you put a harmonica on a record and then the band or the, uh, the act has to tour and there's nobody to play that harmonica part, they're kind of stuck, you know, so uh, <laughs> there's not that many harp players out there that are touring or the bands that'll take, they may take, you know, harp players. I'm sorry, I'm being called. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, if uh, you know, it, it, it's just really extra. It's a treat to have uh, the harmonica in a band, and a lot of bands don't have the uh, you know the budget to uh, bring somebody out that just plays harmonica. Yeah. So if you play guitar and you second, you know, on harmonica, that's a good thing to do. Or if you're a harmonica player and can play a little guitar or keyboards, that's that's great. Oh, that yeah. would ensure, you know, a, a good road gig. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I hope there's going to be more harmonica because, like, I mean, as soon as people hear it, like, I mean, there, there are so many people who are, like, tired of saxophone solos or I don't know. <laughs> And it doesn't yeah, matter, like, what style, like, like it. even if it's, like, jazz or if it's, like, deep house, pop music, whatever. Yeah, you just have to get out and play. I think that's the thing. The more people see you. Yeah. You know, it's like when I, in town, whenever I would go out and sit in in a club or, you know, I'd always run into somebody that would say, oh, I could use you on a session. You know, I don't go out that much. I haven't in the last year, you know, but um, I, th I think that you really have to kind of work the room. You know, if you live in a city where there's a lot of music, a lot of, you know, live music, you know, it's a good thing to go out and uh, and just meet people and be seen. Yeah, do you rem remember the first time you went on stage with Harmonica? Um, I don't really remember the first time. I uh, It might have been, I don't know, it was probably when I was in, you know, in high school or something. Oh, I remember in my high school talent show, I there was a band that I was going to sit in with But they wouldn't let me play harmonica, but they let me play the triangle. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but where are they now? You know. But yeah, high school. This was that was my first concert, <laughs> or like yeah. first first time playing harmonica on stage. Um, well, I was in the band. I, I played tuba in the marching band. Oh, okay. I was a ter terrible tuba player. They just needed somebody to hold it you know, hold the thing and, and carry it in at the ball games, at the football games, you know, yeah. and mark the thing. So, but I learned a little bit. I wish I'd stuck with it. I wish I was still playing. I still have a mouthpiece somewhere, but, um, so with that, have you already been used to being on stage or was it that, was that something that felt natural to you, but, or was it something you had to get used to playing in front I of think people? You have to get used to it. I mean, I'm still, You know, if it's a small room, if it's a small place, it's scary. If it's a big stage, I mean, if it's a big crowd. I totally understand. You know, we play Glastonbury. You know, how many, what was that, 200,000 people? Yeah. And it's it's like it's like you could be out there by yourself. You, there's so many people, you don't see them, you know. Yeah, that's uh, the thing. <laughs> but if there was 50 people in an audience, that would be terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, I have the same experience. Like, as soon as you can, like, Really, like look into the the eyes of the of the audience. It's a little yeah. more scary. Yeah. Also, yeah. if it's like, if there are like people who like, who know you or have heard about you in some sort of way. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially like, if there are other heart players, it makes me nervous. You yeah. know, Paul Butterfield. I was hanging out with him, and he came to our shows uh, when I, we were in New York, and he came a couple of nights, and it just you know, scared me to death having him around, you know, he'd come out and play too with this, okay. which was, was still scary, but to have him sitting on the side of the stage was even scarier, you know. I can understand that. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a question by Woozle, Woozle, another one. Um, what inspired your Red River Valley album? So many classic, simple, but elevated tunes elevated to a masterfully dynamic level. Uh, well, thank you. Um, nothing inspired it. They called me and said, we're doing a, a record for uh, uh, Cracker Barrel, which is a, a, a chain of, uh, of, uh, of restaurants here. And we want to do a harmonica-based, you know, record of, uh, of of standards, of folk standards. So they actually gave me the list of songs to do. I got to help, you know, pick the musicians I wanted to to you know play with, 
because uh, there's some great players. Uh, Stuart Duncan is playing, you know, uh, violin on it, playing fiddle. Um, so it was a real treat to play with those guys. But it was just like a work for hire. It, it really wasn't. And that's what I told him. I said, don't make this a Mickey Raphael record. This is a harmonica record, you know, of, uh, and I'll just be, you just put my name on there like the rest of the musicians, like the other players. So it was really not a creative, I had no creative uh, involvement in it other than when they gave me the list of songs, I, I could pick how to do the arrangements, you know. And again, I wanted to keep them really simple. And, uh, you know, and just there, there's there's very little improvising on that, which is what they wanted. They just wanted hmm. us yeah. straight ahead, you know, uh, folk album like that. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Hope that answers your question. Um, there's another question by Pierre Hege. Do you use overdraws and overblows? No. I really don't, you know, I, uh, um, I don't, <laughs> I just, okay. um, I, I'll leave that to the professionals. I'll leave that to Howard Levy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But did you, did you ever try them or what I also thought of like, the, do you, did you get into like using like some alternate tunings? I do, I do like the alternate tunings. I use natural minor tuning a lot. Mm, uh, of course okay. the country tuning. I like the, the melody kind of tunings. Um, and I like playing in, uh, I just started messing with first position a little more. Um, but, uh, you know, of course I play second position, third position, and then, um, I guess, is it, is it 11th position or is, so if you're in the key of C, uh, and you play a, a an E flat harmonica, uh, no, I'm sorry. If you're in the key of G and you play any, okay, G, C, F. B flat, E flat, fifth position, would that be fifth position? An E flat where your tonic is the uh, two blow. Okay, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So That's like fifth that position. position. A little bit, yeah. But you know who's who does some great work on in different positions is uh, Charlie Musselwhite. Mm, yeah. You know, he's always messing with some different positions on that. But with Willie, you know, with, with Willie's stuff, It's it's usually second position. Yeah. You know, the same with uh, with Chris Stapleton. Okay. The next question probably coming from India. This is Sumanth Parakala. What's the wildest set you've ever played? So much so that it left your lips chapped at the end, <laughs> but you've enjoyed thoroughly. <laughs> Well, we were in playing a festival in Louisiana, an outdoor festival, and it was raining and we didn't go on till really late, probably midnight. And Willie thought, let's see how long we can play. And we actually played till the sun came up. So we played all night long yeah. and tried to wear out the audience. And there are still a few stragglers left. It looked like the walking dead out there in the audience because it had been raining and everybody was, you know, was drunk or messed up. And we just kept playing. You know, we, I think we did, did like a four hour set. And, um, you know, if my lips weren't bleeding, I, you know, I, I was, it was, it was hard to stand, you know, it was like, it was, it was last man standing, whoever could, 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 could st you know, stay up the longest. So that was a test. Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean there there there's some wild stuff that can happen like I don't know playing at like high elevations and like heat and oh, with open air concerts. Yeah. Well, we just did something and... the other day. We did a, a fundraiser or a benefit for the homeless in San Francisco. And it was outdoors and it was about 45 degrees and 20 mile an hour winds. So we only played an hour, but it was pretty brutal. I kept slipping uh, those little hand warmers into Willie's pocket. Oh yeah, you know things you you squeeze and they they, they uh, have a chemical reaction and get warm. So that was hard. It's hard to play. I don't. It's harder for a guitar player, I guess, to move his fingers. But uh, I could at least, you know, I wouldn't wear gloves, but I at least keep my hands in my pocket. Still, it's time to play. 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, probably hard for everyone, but with harmonica, like, you could run into problems with, like, reed sticking and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, but I'll have several, several, uh, I've got a couple of sets of harmonicas on stage. During a show, I'll have the, 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 the harps that I play the most, I'll have uh, backups. Oh, yeah. You know, That's there, so important. So. Just yeah. to have like the other one ready if like something, yeah. something happens. <laughs> I'm in the studio. I might go in the studio with you know uh, three sets of harmonicas, you know, just in case something happens. It usually doesn't, but oh yeah, you, know, you never know. So do you really like play out of box harmonicas? And how about like tuning the instruments? Like, do you just get new ones, or do you have them tuned? I, I well, I um, yeah, at Honer. Um, well, I, I, I'll play the, the Joe Felisco, you know, makes my harmonicas for yeah. me most of the time. But I can, but, but if I get something out of the box or if I call Hunter and eat something quick, um, I, I, I can just, I can pretty much play them out of the box. You know, I really don't adjust anything. Um, nice. Yeah. I'm trying to think of, uh. Um, Tim Schofield, who's at Honer, is a, the, the repair guy there, but he's brilliant. And he'll tweak, you know, harmonicas for me. So. Okay. And did you but ever I, get I like into... The way the wood, I like the way the, the, the Marine bands and the, uh, um, you know, and, and the crossovers are set up now. So they really fit how I play. Yeah. And, you... and anything Joe Felisco does is fabulous. You know, he knows my playing enough to where I just say, you know, I need this, or I'll send him back a harp that he worked on. Oh yeah. You know, to, uh, to, to you know, to set up for me. So. Yeah, that's really good if you have somebody who can set up harmonicas and knows about like how you play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but, but did you ever get into like setting up harmonicas yourself and opening them up? No, because I'm just I've, I've got uh, I'm just not I don't have great dexterity in my hands and. You know, I, I'm not a, a tinkerer at all. I, I just, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't have patience. And I, I've, I've messed up so many good harmonicas trying to to, uh, oh, trying okay. to tune or trying to adjust them or something like that. I've learned just to let, you know, again, let the pros do it. Yeah. yeah I I destroyed some harmonicas. But <laughs> and I like, because I like being dependent on other people. You know, it's like, I, I love Felisco and he takes good care of me, you know, and then the, I can say Tim at Honer, he's he, he's a uh, you know great technician and a oh know, yeah good guy to have on your team. So, um, Wobik Wobik is asking, do you have a favorite key to play in? You know, I like playing in the key of A and I like playing in the key of F. And I like that that B flat harmonica. I, we don't do a lot in F, but uh, you know, I have the best. Yeah, it's not a guitar Wobik, key. Like a, like a D harmonica or a B flat harmonica, I love playing. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, of course, people are asking if we can play something. Do you have something in mind that we could do, or do you have like a little little melody that we can both play, know, or know. we could just like trade phrases or something? <laughs> I don't know. Let me follow you on something. You know, it's. Uh... No, because I, you know, I, I, I've never been a band leader, and uh, I've always worked with other, you know, with bands that you know that ha have a uh, or, or songwriters, you know, singer songwriters that have their own thing. I've never been the guy to stand in the middle and lead a band, so I'm a good follower. Mm, okay, yeah. Let me see. I mean, I like to play my B flat harmonica too. Okay, I have I have a B flat that's a melody tune. Uh, that's, Let me just get a regular B flat. Um, oh yeah, the chat also likes the B flat harmonica. <laughs> ah, okay. There, there's that uh, there's that nice little it's like a very majorish blues melody 
It's called Sandu that I like to play. Okay. <laughs> Just improvise. what you're doing on that high end that's nice <laughs> yeah that's like a i like the that melody there, there was a lot of tongue blocking i didn't expect that <laughs> oh yeah well with octaves i can do it i'm playing single notes i have to work on that i haven't done that so much oh yeah yeah, I mean, guys can the guys that can tongue block and bend the notes. I'm mean, that that that's quite impressive. You know? mm, okay. Yeah, I just got like very heavily into it when I checked out. I was very much into Dennis Grunling. Oh yeah, he's a great player. And he basically like he didn't force me, but I had like a few lessons with him, like four or five, like online. And at that time, I was just like a 100% tongue blocker. <laughs> oh, for playing single notes? Yeah, for everything. Yeah. Um, but now I'm mostly lip pursing again. <laughs> um, there's a nice question that I was also thinking about. Um, so Shane Sager is asking, uh, I was wondering, aside from harmonica players, who are some of your big musical influences? Um, oh, aside from harmonica players, yeah, uh, King Curtis, you know, on on saxophone, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of horn. Miles Davis, uh, Miles Davis, King Curtis, Ray Charles. So would that also be the stuff that we would find in your like most recent Spotify playlist, or do you listen to like completely other stuff nowadays? Yeah, I listen to everything on my Spotify playlist. Um, um, you know, I was listening a lot to Jimmy Smith, you know, it, it, uh, on Oregon, and uh, everything from Jimmy Smith to, uh, um, you know, to Los Lobos, you know, or Flaco Jimenez, you know, okay. on the uh, on the accordion. So, yeah, my, my Spotify playlist is pretty diverse. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Um, Woozle is asking, do you have a favorite example of a time you played harmonica on a very unusual track for harmonica or in a very unusual style? Um, yeah, the, um, there was a, there was a, uh, Willie and, um, let's see, uh, I'm trying to think. The unusual style. 
No, I can't come up with anything right now. It's all... Maybe, I don't know, like a progressive rock record. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, well, I, um, I played on uh, Molly Cruz, uh, Smoking in the Boys Room. That's, uh, I, pl I played the solo on that. And that was, you know, that was a pretty, that's something I haven't done a lot of, you know, but okay. that was a big hit for, uh, for Motley Crue. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Unusual style on harmonica. I don't know, it was unusual. <laughs> um, oh yeah, Shane just, uh tuned in do you play any other instruments no not, not some guitar yeah, some yeah. piano yes poorly accordion guitar um but i like uh the following question like did some of these instruments like influence like your harmonica playing at all yeah my fr phrasing too okay uh, i mean the way king curtis would would would, would phrase you, you know would play his, his his phrases um and his timing so Yeah, definitely. And Miles, who I actually got to spend a little time with, that was dr trying to drum into my head that it's that uh, it's not necessarily what you play, but it's what what you don't play. Also, you know, you can have all the skills, but you have to know when to play it and when not to play it. Which is when not to play is is probably one of the uh, most important things you need to know, especially in the studio too. Especially in the studio, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and also, that's a can be a harmonica player's disease like just yes, uh, yes. like the guitar thing is like to win not to play you know because like with guitar you can also like go on forever and you don't have to breathe with harmonica yeah. like you're breathing through the instrument and you're still playing <laughs> with the horn you gotta gotta breathe in between and yeah there have to be breaks in there yeah well somebody told me one time this guitar player grady martin who is a like the studio guitar player in Nashville in the 40s and the 50s. I mean, he's just a classic uh, 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 guitar player. He told me one time, he goes, man, he said, smoke a cigarette. He says, take that damn, take that thing out of your mouth. You play too much. Okay. Yeah. Which was the best advice anybody ever told me. But, you know, he wasn't so warm and fuzzy when he told me, but uh, it was good advice. Yeah, that's also an option. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, Woozle is surprised that it was you playing harmonica on that record. He's definitely oh, uh, going to re-listen it. Yeah. Yeah. And Lionel Richie, there was a track we did with Willie and Lionel Richie doing "I'm Easy," and I played a solo on that. Okay. That was pretty cool. You know. Is that on a on a record or is it like a live? Uh, yeah, it was a uh, thing. It was a uh, Lionel Richie uh, record that he did with a bunch of country artists, duets with Lionel. And then the Beach Boys, we did Warmth of the, the Sun with uh, Willie singing with the Beach Boys backing him up. And I uh, played on that. And, and we're in the studio. We had, uh, I, I was sitting next to uh, uh, Brian Wilson. That was quite scary. You know, I mean, he's a wonderful guy, but I mean, it was scary to have that, you know, that... Uh, powerful uh a musical force you know sitting next to me in the studio but uh, oh yeah that's one of my favorite recordings too warmth of the sun that's on a uh uh you know a uh a duets record with the uh, beach boys doing duets with different country acts wow yeah well yeah you you played i'm on so many records it's like they're like some since something still in your mind where you think like oh yeah i really want to play a harmonica solo on on that artist's record or i'd love to do some more hip-hop stuff you know i okay. love doing the thing with uh with, with snoot dog and uh you know it's um yeah i think that could you i think that genre of music would the harmonica would uh really fit in with some of the you know the rhythmical stuff that uh, you know a lot of the urban music is doing that, that's so true there are also some isn't there like uh who was that i don't know but there's like some stevie wonder like on on the on the drake record and also on the travis scott record 
Hmm. I think yeah, I haven't heard there's that, like some what, chromatic what harmonica. What a brilliant player he is, you know. Yeah. A lot of, uh, yeah, I think on that Travis Scott record is like, uh, I think that song is called "Stop Trying to Be God" or something. And this is like the there's like the chromatic harmonica is like very very uh, in reverb, <laughs> obviously, wow. and like but very bright too. Um, sounds sounds pretty that. nice. But yeah, like the like the hip hop idea. I I always failed like incorporating the harmonica into my 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 hip hop productions. <laughs> and now it's more like I'm working on more like I'm working on Afro beat stuff. But sometimes the solo works there. Oh, did you hear that sound? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's just like the notification that you get on Twitch if somebody subscribes to you. <laughs> Oh, good. Well, you got a subscriber. Yeah, I don't know who it was, though. It's like on another tab or something. <laughs> so you already told me that um, slowly you're getting back on the road and you're playing concerts in August with Willie Nelson again. Right. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing Dance some with coming Chris up, Stapleton, right? too, with Chris. I think the end of July, there's uh, three or four dates with Chris Stapleton. And then it segues, it goes right into Willie for a couple of weeks. And so that's like all over the U.S.? For... All in the U.S., yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Stevie Chromatic Solo on Usher's Confessions Part 1 is so good. Hmm, Usher record. Okay, I'll, look, I'll have to look. I'm writing that down. I gotta check that out too. I don't know about that Asher, Asher one. Confessions part one. Wojcic is says, I love your solo on Willie's reggae version of Darkness on the Face of the Earth. Ah. Uh, thank you. Well, I think harmonica is like a very good reggae instrument too. Yeah. Yeah, that would be fun to do some more reggae stuff. I played on Ziggy Marley, did a children's record. Um, mm, yeah. So uh, I played on one of the songs. Um, I can't remember the name of the song, but uh, it was uh, uh, Ziggy and uh, Willie singing. Crazy. Yeah. So, so do you ever plan to do, do, do you plan to come to Europe at some point again or like also touring? I don't think with Willie we'll go to Europe again, okay. but uh, I'd, I'd love to, uh, next year we're talking about, you know, doing a tour with uh, my friend in Oslo, in, in Norway, uh, Steiner Rackness is his name. Okay. And he was the uh, he's a jazz bass player that, uh, you know, that I've done several records with. So I look forward to that and maybe we'll get, you know, into Europe too. That would be fun. Nice. Yeah. How about how about the harmonica festivals? Have you ever attended like the the spa convention or other events like that? No, I've, I I've never attended. I would love to, but we're it's always when we're on the road. Oh so, yeah. You know, Willie tour so much in the summer or the spring. You know, or the fall rather. Yeah. Yeah. And now yeah, all of them aren't happening. So. <laughs> there's some there's some online stuff going on or at least i mean this is the most beautiful way to like stay in touch with the harmonica world just online with right. these interviews and there are so many podcasts going on and yeah it's like a good time for like new and upcoming harmonica players to to learn and about the instrument yeah there's so learn. much great teaching stuff jason ritchie is a great teacher uh i i, I like to watch you know some of his uh, his YouTube, yeah. Uh, you know, he's a great player and he's always fun to watch. Yeah, very very regular uploads now. Um, mm -hmm. And we also have a, we have a challenge coming up. Um, a little ad here with uh, Tomlin Lecky. He's uh, I think he's the biggest harmonica teacher on YouTube. Um, oh. So we're gonna do a slow blues challenge. Um, on May 13th um, 
check it out oh, in the description be... box below. <laughs> um, but also, check out the description box below to uh, check out more stuff about uh, Mickey. Um, what's like the best uh, place for people to, to follow you or to buy your records? Well, I, I really don't have any uh, on my own. Uh, I did I did an instrumental record in, in 1988, but it's uh, I don't even know if it's available. It can be streamed, but uh, hard copies aren't really available. But, uh, you know, just my Instagram, which is Mickey Raphael. Yeah. Or uh, I, I have a website that I don't really uh, uh, update so much. But but uh, just my Instagram is kind of uh, um, I, I, I post you know, several times a week, you know, kind of what's going on. Oh, yeah. That's good. So that's linked below. Um, you can check it out. Follow Mickey on Instagram. And, uh, yeah. That's great. I hope to I hope to see you at some point in person. Like, I don't know. At the yeah, Hong I, I'm Festival. ready to come back to Germany and play, you know. <laughs> yeah. It'd be great to meet you in person. Yes, indeed. And, uh yeah, maybe just start a start a real jam in real time. <laughs> right, right. Uh, yeah, fantastic. I mean, I um, wish you a lot of fun on tour in August again. Uh, up yeah, until then, you. you're I've probably to... recording a lot for the people. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to to join us here. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Awesome. And I enjoyed the questions. I'm glad everybody was asking questions. That's cool. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, it was a great stuff. Glad the interview happened. Great insights. Thank you. So, yeah, I think everybody liked it. Thank you. Um, thank Woozle. All right. So, um, check out the description below. All the links to Mickey's social media platforms are there um challenge on may 13th and i'll be online on twitch tomorrow at 6 p.m central european summertime um thank you so much mickey and uh, uh goodbye you. everybody hope you have a great day or good evening wherever you are ciao